Hey guys, Happy Nostalgia here, coming here with a um, update on my Revell Dornier 335 Aero. Um, I've done sub a substantial amount of work since the last update. I'm overall pretty happy with it so far. I still got a ways to go, but it's getting there. So here it is, right here. I got the tail, the horizontal stabilizers on. The second cockpit is on. It covers a lot of the detail here on the um, engine, but what are you going to do about that? Um, if you guys ever had this kit or plan on buying this kit, um, see where this silver, um, actually, let me see, let me get this exacto knife. So if you see right here where this exact knife is pointing, this silver spot, behind there, it's just emptiness. Um, also right here, into this, I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of curves right there. And there's kind of a difference between the gray and the black. But so there's no plastic right there, so that's mostly putty right there. And right, this back plate's a um, horizontal stabilizer of a... Um, SPD Dauntless model that I had laying around. So that's that. Second cockpit, um, right here. Details in there, everything's good. You can't really see the control panel, which um, I'm not too mad about. The fit right here wasn't that good. So you can see a lot of filler right here. Um, what else, what else? Put this engine cover up right here. I'll explain what that hole is in a little bit, but I have my two, the two wings right here. You have the option to put, to have different flaps. They're just pegs, and um, you, if you wanted to, you could rotate them, raise them and lower them at will. They're not intended to be glued, but I prefer these to be glued. Um, I got this right here, the intake done. Um, so you can see a lot of filler right here. And, of course, one of the air intakes. Um, I've already primed it, so I think I'm going to airbrush it later this week, maybe the weekend. And um, this week I'm mostly going to work on the, um, what do you call it, on the gear and uh, all the other accessories. So, let me explain what this hole is right here. I put a few... Um, on the instruction, it said um, to put 20 grams of weight in the nose, since it is a tricycle landing gear configuration right here. It said to put 20 grams, but um, I didn't put enough in there. I put way less. I'm not even sure. Maybe 5 grams. I didn't have any of those scales, so I, I kind of had to estimate, and I really didn't know how much 20 grams was. So I didn't put a lot. I put um, some metal kind of blocks in there, which I thought would do the trick, but apparently it didn't. So what I thought, I put a lot of um, filler in here. I took like a tube of filler, but then not my particular, not a Temia filler, like a different company filler, which isn't that good. So I filled, I pumped a lot of filler into this the f front landing gear, so you can see all this kind of residue right here. And the landing gear kind of comes out at an angle like this. So it's not straight down, it's at an angle like this. So this would kind of be giving a more weight. So I kind of goofed up there. So I drilled this hole right here, and I filled this with putty, and I tried to put like little different things in. But you won't be able to see this on the model, because in the real model, when it's completed, you have this piece that goes right over it. And you'll never know it's there. So that's what's been going up. Um, I basically just have to paint this and build the gear and the props and the engine covers. But um, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Hey, guys. Happy nostalgia here. I have a, another inbox review. This was given to me as a gift. Um, by my grandparents. I just acquired it yesterday, and um, I'm pretty excited to do this. 
So the kit is right here. Ravel 144th Tornado ECR Tiger Meat Scheme. So this is a um, pretty nice box art. I like it. Um, these are the dimensions if you want to see. This is the Tiger Meat 2011 variant. Level 3 skill, bit, skill build. The box is a little bit banged up because... Um, I don't know why exactly, but it's a little bit banged up. So you can see kind of a description of what you get in the box. Another kind of thing right here. And a description of the plane, if you want to pause and read that. There you go. On the back, it's got some other products right here. The scale. I think this um, Henkel 219 Yoohoo. It's really interesting. I've always wanted to do one of these. So, yeah, let's get this bad boy opened. Okay, um, put this exact on my way so I don't cut myself. So, it is a side opening box, sadly. Oh, that's weird. There's no, um, Kind of wrap around the pieces. Okay. Let's get on. Where's the. There it is. Okay. So here's the instruction Tornado ECR. You got some. You got some history about it if you want to read this. You can pause the video. Um. Like, kind of what the symbols mean, legend, um, I think some safety, maybe. I don't read that. Color call outs right here. Um, you got a, kind of a numbering all the parts. I know it has a name, I just can't remember it. Keep in mind, this is 1 to 144, so these are very small. It's a cockpit assembly. Um, more stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here, really. Cockpit, um, going into the fuselage. Wings, you can rotate the wings. This is one of those planes. Kind of like the F-14 Tomcat, where the wings pivot and whatnot. Here we go. The top assembly is up. Um, engines... Attaching the nose, air intakes, going in. landing gear. If you see here, they want you to take a piece of plastic and cut it up into these f di three different shapes, and I'm just not going to do that. Since this is an air show kind of looking plane, I'm going to make a little stand and have it flying around um, just for fun. Something there, I have no idea. More landing gear, which I'm not going to do. Cockpit installed. I have the option for a. Um, what do you call it? For air to air refueling? I don't think I'll do that. Weapon pylons. Uh, fuselage pylons. I think those are drop. That might be a drop tank or a uh, bomb. Some missiles. And, um. Oh, there's different variants of weapons. So you can have these, um. Mi long missiles right here under the wings. Where we can have these kind of like drop tank guided bomb things. I'm probably gonna go with this one. This looks better. Um, and I think that's it. And this is the paint scheme. It's really crazy, but um, it's a little bit less. And of course, decals for the kind of uh, weapons and all that. Um, safety advice. You don't really need that. Let's get to the sprues. Um, let me get something here to show you guys how small this is. Okay. Um, this is a 1 to 48th figure for my Dornier. And um, this is him compared to the fuselage. So, propeller from a World War II plane to the fuselage. Um... I don't really know what else to to, 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 to compare it to. 
but um, it's small. Okay, trust me on this one. It's small. This is how big it is to an exacto knife. It's pretty small. Okay, so we can get into a little bit of detail here. Oh, wait, it goes the other way. I have no idea um, what these parts are for. I don't know. That's the antenna on the front of the um, nose. Cockpit tub, no, no detail, not surprising. The chairs are nicely molded right here. This is kind of the separator that goes behind the pilot. Right here is the little door that they want you to cut up for the gear, which um, I'm not willing to do. Control panels right here and there. These are the landing gear doors, I suppose. Nose wheel right here. I'm not too sure what that is. Part of the air-to-air -air refueling. Rear wheels. Rear um, wheel legs. More parts of the air-to-air -air refueling. Vertical stabilizer right here. Um, thrusters. Horizontal stabilizer. More to the air-to-air -air refueling. And the few two, two fuselage halves. Next up, um, this is the cockpit right here. No detail in here, even though you won't be able to see it. Um, we got some... Let me make sure you guys can see this. Got some missiles right here. Pylons. I'll show you those. Fuselage pylons. More of the um, air intake. Two wings. You can kind of see they have a gear system right here. Let some, when you move one, it moves the other, which is pretty neat. Ravel has a, quite a few of these kits that have those play features. So, kind of a... I don't know what that would be. Maybe like a laser-guided bomb. More pylons. I think fins for these drop tanks or something. I'm not too sure. And we have one more miniature sprue. Another pylon. The thing that goes under in the fuselage. And two missiles. Um... Little observation, these are both Revell kits, but the quality of plastic is very different. This kind of has a air fix feel to it, the kind of plastic they use, and this has a, you know, Revell feel. So, maybe this is a um, reboxing of a different company's kit, I'm not sure, but yeah. Now let's get to the decals. This is probably going to be the hardest part of the kit. But I think it would be better than painting it. You don't need any orange at all. It comes all with the decals. So the main thing when I saw this kit. I was worried that I'd, I'd have to paint the f nose. But no, you get decals for that. Which is nice. Um, but you don't get decals for the, for the cockpit frame. You have basically... All the decals you need, which is very nice of Ravel. I couldn't imagine hand painting it. If I had to, I'd probably do a different scheme. I find it funny that they have a website URL on the back of that tail fin, and they also give you decals for that. So, yeah, this looks like a pretty exciting kit. It might take me a day or two to build. Um, decals will take the longest. So, Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Um, if you have any recommendation with 1 to 144th, leave it in the comments. I've never done one of these. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.